for both sides, we began yesterday a challenging sugi here on Daf Sadi. And the main persona here is Abai. And let's review what Abai has to say here on the top of Daf Sadi Yom and Aleph. And we're talking about a Mishnah in Mesech de Tmura. And the Mishnah in Mesech de Tmura is going to shed a light on the brisa that we're learning here in Psachim. So let's just reiterate what the brisa says, and then we'll get to the Mishnah. Again, this is just a recap, a short synopsis of the end of yesterday's discussion. The Brysa says that when I buy in to your carbon Pesach, so you're the seller of a segment of the Pesach, and I'm the buyer of that segment to be money on the Pesach, the monies that I transfer to you, meaning from the buyer to the seller, in the hands of the seller, they're chul. He can do with it whatever he wants. There's no Isam Me'ila, there's no status of Hegdash. And we were trying to figure that out. The Gemara said it's 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 very difficult because these monies were allotted, we'll call them shim on the buyer, for the sake of carbon pesach. That that gives the money the status once it's designated of hegdish. How does it convert to chulin in the hands of the mocher in the hands of Ruben who's selling his uh, part? You know, part of the of the karma. The carbon itself has Kedusha. The Moz has Kedusha. There's no way of transferring Kedusha to Kedusha. There's no place which is Chulin for the for the Chilul to be Chal. You know, to be Mechalel, something that's Kodesh, and, and do this Pidjon, you've got to transfer the Kedusha over to some place that's Chulin, and we don't have anything here that's Chulin. Now, the answer to this question is going to be found in the Mishnah in Tmura, based on the Gemara in Tmura that interprets that Mishnah in a very strange way. So in a sense, we're going to solve one problem, our Bryce of Bad Carbon Pesach, with another problem of the Mishnah in Tmura. Now the Mishnah in Tmura is dealing with the issue of Esnan Zona, which is Asr Lemizbeh, becomes Posel Lemizbeh. And the Mishnah wants to know, what if he had a carbon, it was dedicated as a carbon, in this case, a carbon Pesach, and he gives it to a zona to hire her services. Does it become an Estan zona? And the Mishnah says, no. The Gemara says that the reason why this carbon Pesach does not become Estan zona is because of a special Yalfusa. So the problem is, what, what are you talking about Yalfusas over here? What's the Havamina that this carbon can become Estan Zona? We have a principle called Ein Adam Otsar Dover Shalom. I cannot generate an Esau on something that's not mine. Once I designate it for the Mizbeach and it takes upon itself the Kedushas Mizbeach, it no longer belongs to me. It now belongs to the Mizbeach. Well, what, what's the Havamina here that he can generate an Esau? And a psul of Estan Zona on something that's Kodesh doesn't belong to him. Why do we need a Pasuk Yalfusa to establish that the Karman does not become possible through the mechanism of Estan Zona? So Abai says that Rav Oshia has an answer to solve that riddle of the Mishnah Tmura. And based on his solution to the problem of the Mishnah Tmura, we now have a solution to the problem of our Brysa with regarding the monies that were allocated to buy, a, buy into the carbon vessel. What was Rav Oshia's explanation of the Mishnah Tmura? He said that the Mishnah Tmura reflects the sheet of Rebbe. And the way he, Rav Oshia, understood the sheet of Rebbe, Rebbe was of the opinion that when you makdish a carbon as a Pesach, you are Meshire. Meshire means you hold back. You don't give the entire 
Pesach from top to bottom the status of Hegdesh and Kedushas Mizbeach, you leave something behind. That's called Shir. Like, for example, if I, I could sell you a house, but I want to retain ownership of one room in the house. So that's called a Shir. Here there's a Shir in the Hegdesh, in the Hagdasha of the carbon Pesach. It's not Hegdesh Gom. So there, it, it's, it's as if, again, don't take me seriously or literally here, but it's as if there's one part of the animal of the lamb that was left out of the equation and is not called Kadosh Biktuchas Pesach, and therefore it's Chulin. And the Havamina now would be that since there's some part of this carbon that it remains through sheer Chulin, therefore the Easter of Estan Zona would in fact be Chal on this carbon Pesach. Because the Pesach is not Kodesh Legamri. So you ask me who owns the carbon Pesach. Normally I would tell you that it's owned by the Mizbeach, but in the light of Rav Oshia's ra- revolution, no, it's not owned by the Mizbeach. He retains ownership. That's the Shiru. And basically, on that ownership, we could have a Chalos Esnan Zon. And then it becomes Adam Oseh Dovet Shalom. Till we have the Alphus. So comes along a Baye, and he says that now in the light of Rav Oshia, we can shed a new light and solve the problem of the Brysa with regard to Minui on the Korban Pesach. Why is the money that is dedicated as Hegdish for the purpose of buying into the Korban Pesach? How has that money become Chulin in the hands of the Mocher when the Lokeach buys his? segment his piece of the Minui of the Karm Pesach? How did it all of a sudden become Chulin? And the answer is because the Karm Pesach itself has a part Chulin to it, so to speak. It's not Hegnich Legam. So you can now transfer the Kedusha from the Mos onto that section of the Karm Pesach, which is the section of the Karm Pesach that is now being uh, bequeathed, so to speak, to the buyer. And now we have a chilul of Hegdesh on Tuchun, which is exactly what chilul Hegdesh is all about. We thought that the Karm Pesach was completely, totally Hegdesh. And then you're, you're transferring Hegdesh to Hegdesh that you can't do. The answer is in the light of Rabbi Oshia. We have a new interpretation of the Hegdesh of Pesach. It's not a complete Hegdesh at all. And it leaves enough of a shear, enough of a room for a, like we said in Rav Oshia, for the Yesen Zona to be chal in the Havim before the Joshua. And there's enough room left from the Hegdesh for a chil of the Mos. Omar Abaye, he loved the Ukme, Rabbi Oshia Lahi. If not for the fact that Rav Oshia had interpreted the Mishnah in Tmur Bimamana. Zonal Pischo, the mission in Tour did not designate, did not specify explicitly what kind of a carbon it was dealing with with regard to Esnan Zona. There's Rabbi Oshia, Rebbe, he, we're talking about a carbon Pesach, and he's hiring the Zona with a carbon Pesach. I don't know if she knows what she's getting into here, that I don't know. But anyway, he's giving her. A nice live lamb, very healthy lamb, or a, a young goat, as Esnan Zona. And Ravoshia says that if all things were equal within the absence of a drusha to the opposite, the contrary, we would assume that the Esnan is Chal because the Karm Pesach is not Kodosh Lagam. And he still retains Mamon Bailan. It still is his, but that again, that only applies to one carbon on the face of the of all of Kajim, and that's the carbon pesach. And he's Meshayer Bikduchasa when he's Magdish the carbon pesach. He's Meshayer again, he holds back. And he's not being Magdish the Pesach Legamre. Therefore, says Ravoshia, if we had not had a possible, we would have concluded that this Shiur which leaves 
some element of mamon bailim here in the carbon Pesach allows for the Estan Zona to be chal and generates the Yisra Estan Zona. Says Abaye, if not for Rabbi Ochia, have a mukmin Allah, he bekachim kalim. Now, what does Abaye gain here by changing the script? Rabbi Oshia's script had it as if the, the Mishnah Tabura was discussing exclusively the case of Karben Pesach as an Esnan Zona. Comes along, Abaye, and he breaks out of that shell, out of that uh, restriction. And he says, no, we're talking about any, any behemoth of Kodshim, as long as it's Kodshim Kalim. Now, what's unique about Kodshim Kalim is that the Bailim own the carbon and they can eat the boss of the carbon, which they can't do with any other carbon. I mean, any kachin kachin. Like, for example, Ola, Chatos, and Asham leave the Bailim with absolutely nothing. But in Shlomim, the Bailim have rights. They'll eat the boss. Now we're introducing a third sugya. We've been dealing with Psachim and with Tmura. Now we have to add a sugya in Baba Kama. This is the sugya of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, as far as Kachim Kalim are concerned. And Rabbi Yossi Aglili maintains that Kachim Kalim are Momon Bailim. That it's not just that they have rights to eat the basar. It's more than that. Fundamentally, the, the carbon itself belongs to them in being mamanus. So now, says Abaye, if we introduce Rabbi Yossi Aglili into the picture, we have an answer to that question as to why the mos that were designated by Shimon to buy into the carbon basar will now go chulin when they come into the hands of the mocher. Because we're talking about Rabbi Yossi Aglili. And Rabbi Yossi Aglili maintains that Kachim Kalim are moment violent. And, the, and and any Kachim Kalim, whatever Kachim Kalim he gave for Esnan Zona, it could be Pesach, it could be Shlomim, maybe it's Bukhar, Masa. You have to know which Karbonos are involved here, but you can probably come up with a whole list of Karbonos, all of which, according to Rabbi Yossi Aglid, are Mom and Bailim. And if they're Mom and Bailim, there should be an Esnan Zona, if not for the Apostle, because there's no issue of Ain on him. He's the uh, proud owner of these carbonos, whatever they are, and therefore they become Esnan Zon. Now let's think. If Abaye is shifting the Mishnah in Tmura from Rabbi Yossi's authorship of Rebbe to Abaye's authorship of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, will this give us a clue as to how to answer our Brysim Sachim with regard to the money that was allocated by Shimon to buy in to Ruvain's carbon pestle? And the answer is that Abaye rejected Rabbi Oshia for the following reason. He believes that when a person is Magdich or Karbon, there's no shield. There are no bars, no, no, he doesn't hold back. He's Magdish the Karbon from A to Z completely with a Hegdish Gomu, which again will now bring us back the original problem, 
where is there going to be or how is there going to be Chilul of the Maus that were designated for Hegdesh to buy a car by Shimon. And now those Maus beyond Ruvain, the seller, all of a sudden, whoopie do, they become Maus of who? Where? Where's the Chilul? The Kash is the old Kash. You talk about Hegdish for Hegdish. Because Abai maintains that when a person is Magdish a Karmon, it's Hegdish Gomon, even in the case of Karmon Pesach. Abel, the Pesach, lo Mishayer Inish. Abai disagrees with Rabbi Avo. Again, he has no problem with the Mishnah Tura because Abai is going to interpret the Mishnah Tura in the light of Rabbi Yosef Glili, and the discussion is about Kodshe, 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 Oh, now the question is, so what do we do with Rebbe Sheet and the Brisa that when you buy into the Karmesa, the most beyond a mocher become most kulin, and the mocher can now spend that money in any way, any shape or form that he wants to? He says, be most do you see where Abai is shifting the whole emphasis here? According to Rabbi Avo, we're dealing with the Shear in the Magdish. According to Abai, we're dealing not with the Magdish, but with the Balamox, with Shimon. Even though Ruven, when he was Magdish, the Lamb as a Kompesa, he did not have any holds bar and it was a Hegdish Gomor. But Shimon, when he designates his money for the purpose of purchasing a carbon Pesach, part of it, he has shear. That's called the most Vada Mishire Inish. Now, this shear in which the buyer of the carbon pest, like we call him Shimon, is leaving over like some sort of a latch, some sort of a loophole for allowing Chulin, so that now when he pays off and buys from Ruvain his chalik in the carbon pest, Ruvain now is holding on to most Chulin. That's based on the Vada Mishaira Inchi when he was, when he was allotting, allocating these monies to buy the carbon Pesach. And he says the following, A powerful but very ambiguous statement. Abaye is now doing a psychological analysis of the mindset of the person who allocated money to buy into the carbon pest. Meikara. Meikara means at the moment that he was magdish these mos, what was in his mind? Adaite dahachi mafish. On this das, on this understanding, he designated this money. What understanding? Abai doesn't spell it out. So Rashi explains. That mitchilak shu mafrisham, who mafrisham al das, she yucha litain osam, lebala pesak, meaning to the mocher, but toras chul. So the mocher gets these monies and he can use them in any way he wants. I'm not sure what Rashi means. I think that Rashi means a tnai. But it's a different type of a tonight. Usually a tonight means here, I'm giving you this if you'll do this or something along that. Here, what I'm saying is that I am now looking at these mos and establishing that these mos are hegdesh, but only up to a certain moment in time. And that's a different kind of a tonight. Like, for example, a man says to a woman, Take these most, but the condition is only going to be how 30 days down the line. 
or you can sell something. So that means that what you're splitting up through the Tanai are Zmanin, are time periods. Here I'm going to be Magdish these Mos, but only until the point, the moment in time, when I transfer these Mos over to the Mocher who's selling me the carbon pest. Veha Rebbe. And this brisa that says that uh, the Makabel Mos, meaning the Mocher, who's selling a portion of his carpets, is allowed to use the Mos for any purposes he wants. That's Rebbe. Umishum Hachi Mos Shabiyado Chulin. And based on this principle of Vadai Mishayar Inchi, the Mos in the hands of the Mocher become Chulin. Vada Mishire Inch. So again, just to summarize, according to Rav Oshia, the reason why the most hachulin is because of the Hegdish of the Karb Pesach. The Magdish of the Karb Pesach, meaning the Mocher, placed the shield. Abai disagrees when a person is Magdish, it's a complete total Hagdasha without any hold bar, holds bar. But it's the it's the lokeach, the buyer, who is Meshire. And when he points to the Mos and designates them for the purpose of the Karbesa, he says that when they reach the hands of the Mocher, they will become Chut. And apparently he has the ability to do so. And the Gemara continues. The Hahi, that Mishnah Tmura, to come Muki law of Oshia Karebi. And according to Rav Oshia, the Mishnah in Tmura is attributed to Rebbe. And there's going to be a shear in the Hakadosh of the Karb Pesach, such that now the Pesach is like a quasi chulin, which when he gives to the Zona should now generate the Easter of Estan Zona. Lo mikmina le'ana, says Abai, I don't accept that interpretation of the Mishnah in Tmura, Karebi. Why? Because the Bepesach lo meshayar inish. A person is not going to hold back as Ramochi insists he would in being magdish the Kedusha of Behema. Once he's magdish it, he gives it his all and it's no longer his. And therefore there's no Havamina, says Abai, that there would be an Easter Estan Zona if it's not his karma because he's magdish in Legamra. And that's what compels Abaye to introduce Rabbi Yossi Aglili in Kodshik Kalim, which is Mom and Bailim. And that's why the Havamina was Il Mole Kra, that there would be an Easter Estan zona that would be Chal on Kodshik Kalim. Ubemos, Meshire Inish to make Karki Mafishlu, Adai take the Hochi Mafishlu. Some don't have that line, but it's just a repetition of what we had before, so it's perfectly harmless. And therefore, I'm going to interpret the Mishnah in Tmura according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, that Kachim Kachim, Kachim Kalim, Momen Bailamim, and therefore there was a Havamina that when he gives the Kachim Kalim to the Zona, that would generate the Easter of Esnan Zona. Veha, but with regard to our Brisa and our Sugya, that the most that are transferred over to the Mocher, Obviously, Rabbi Yosef Aglili is not going to help us one iota because according to Abaye, the whole emphasis here on the most that has nothing to do with Rabbi Yosef Aglili. Oh. The Hatani Bey V'amokher O'lasu Shlom V'lasu V'lokun. Why does the Gemara add, why does Abayi add this whole principle called HaMocher Olaso Shlom of Lo Oso I cannot sell a carbon, including a carbon Shlom. Because the Gemara wants to suggest here between the lines that Rabbi Yossi Aglili could perhaps help us solve the problem of the most when they transferred over to the Mocher becoming Chulim.
And that's because, according to Rabbi Yosei Aglili, Kachim Kachim Kalim, Moment Bailim, hey? So perhaps, again, this is all in between the lines here, the Gemara. You could suggest that according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, insofar as the Karben Pesach being Kodshik Kalim with Mom and Bailim, now you can effectuate a Chilu where the most that are given to purchase this Karben Pesach now become Chilu. Gemara says, no, that can't be either because Hamokro Los Som Los Lo Klum. Now, where does this come from? Let's turn back to the Brysa. That's on Dach Pei Tesom in Beis. Honor Abonon, I'm a man of Achirim Imo al Pischo al Chagigoso. Moch Abiyodo Chul. The most that he given transferred over to the Mocher are Chul. But then it says, "How mochas olaso shlamov lo aso v'lo klu." Now that means I can't sell shlamim. Why? Because shlamim is hektish; it belongs to hektish. I can't sell something that's not mine. But according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, who holds that Kodshim Kodshe, Kalim are moment bilim, then I could be able to sell it. So for sure, this Brysa is not authored and cannot be attributed to Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Vahashta du kimna du ukme Rabbi Oshia lahi b'mamane zona al pischo Rabbi he shmami no desfirule dafilu pischo mitshayer inish the Rav Oshia holds, according to Rebbe, that a person will, will be Mishayar in his Kenyan when he's Magdish a Karman Pesach and he's not Magdish at Legamre. So that now, after he's Magdish the Karman Pesach, he can invite others to chip in and buy their portions in the Karman Pesach. Because the Akdosha was not Akdosha Gemura. My he Rabbi Oshio. Let's, let's go back to the source. We never saw Rabbi Oshio inside. This not. Now we're going to learn the Mishnah in Tzmura. Nasan la Mukdashin v'es nono. He gave her as hire for her services. A Kaddish l'mizbeah. Harelu mutar. There's no Iser of Estan Zona, and there's no psul in the carbon. But if he gives her ofos de chulin, then they become osur in Estan Zona. Now, why does the why does the Mishnah Torah have to point out that ofos, which are chulin, become osur vitoris Estan Zona? And the Mishnah now answers that question by positing a Kalvachomer, which would have led us to the conclusion that Ophos of Chulin did not become Osir B'Torah's Esnan Zon. Shevahaya B'Din, if we did not have this Pasuk and we were only operating with logic, we'd apply a Din, a Din means the Kalvachomer, Umaim Mukdashim Shehamum Osel Bahem. So there's a Chumra in Kajim that you don't find in Chul. In Chul, there's no such thing as a Psul Mu. In Kajim, there's a Psul Mu. And nevertheless, Ain Estan Umachir Kelev Chalal Lehem. So there's no Easter, even though there's such a Chumra in Kajim. 
that there's a soul of Balmum, nevertheless, I cannot generate an Easter of Estan Zona by giving the Kajin to a Zona. Is Ophos, which are relatively cow, they're Chulin. Shaina ruled Posel Bahem. Now, what this means is that there's a separate aloch in Ophos that doesn't apply to other Zvachim. All Zvachim, with the exception of Ophos, lend themselves to, to the Psul of Balmum, but not an Oph. So, relative to all Kajim, Oph becomes Kal. Is Eino Dinche Eino Esnan Umachir Chalalei. I would have thought in the Habamina that there's no chalos esnan on ofos of chulin because they don't have a psul of balmum. It's almost as if the Easter of esnan zone is a kind of quasi mum. It's obviously it's not a physical blemish in the animal, but it's like a mum. It's now repulsive to the Mizbeach. And I would say that if in the case of a, a regular zevach of a behema, there is no din of esna zona. And despite the chumras and the high standards that the Torah requires in the case of mizbeach, of behemos, nevertheless, there's no iser esna zona generated, and how much more so in something which is doesn't have a psul of Balmum, like Ophos, which are on a different level. Obviously, they don't have the level of, of Kodshe Behemus, and there's no psul of Balmum. How much more so? There should be no Easter of Estan Zona, Talmud Lomar, and therefore we need the Pasuk. In Parshas Kitetze, it says, Lo Sofi, Lo Sofi Estan Zona, Mechir Kevitz, Echol Medet. Why did the Torah have to add these two words, l'chol neder? What's the ribui? The rabbo says a ofos that in the parsha of Estan Zona there's an extra word kol, and that word kol is coming to be marba ofos that there's a chalushem itzu zona on ofos despite the fact. That there's no Chalashem Yisur Zono on Behemos, which have the Psul of Balmum, and that makes them more Chomur. Yet they, there would be no Yisur that's Chal on the on the Kodshe Behemos, on the Mizbeach. And now we have a, uh, and, and therefore we should derive the conclusion that in Ophos, where there is no Psul of Balmum, how much more so there should be no Yisur of Zono, Vesan Zono, Kamash Malan. L'chol, neder, the extra word, l'chol. Okay, Rabbi Osai, so this is where we'll stop for today. I mean, we're still trudging through this sugya here. It's not, you know, it's not a, an easy sugya. There are many different variables, and the Ritz Hashem will uh, continue this tomorrow.